Hey, welcome back, guys. Sean here with Blue Ridge Silverhound. Boom! Hope everyone's doing okay, and you're having a having a great start to your day. Um, so we have a little bit of breaking news. All right, um, and this kind of came out of left field. Um, the Pop Joy Mint. All right, probably a mint that. 90% of you are not familiar with, but once we start talking about them, maybe you've seen a lot of their products before, um, had announced, uh, even their mint director, man, I forgot her name already. Um, <laughs> hey, give me a second. Uh, so the mint director, um, Taya Pobjoy, uh, who's part of the family, apparently, um announced that they are going to be closing up shop uh, miss pop joy is retiring uh they're just going to go ahead and close the pop joy mint um which is located in saray um england uh and yeah i i mean uh it, it's come as come as pretty shocking news uh considering that just a couple months ago I was at the Pittsburgh ANA uh, World's Fair of Money show, um, and the Pop Joy Mint had a pretty sizable booth there, um, right next to some of the others. The U.S. Mint was there, uh, Germania Mint was also there as well. I believe the Royal Mint was there too. Uh, anyways, there was a, there was a few mints that were there. Now, Pop Joy Mint isn't an actual government mint like we all know it to be, um, or like we all know the U.S. Mint and the Royal Mint, Royal Canadian Mint, the uh, New Zealand Mint, and all these other uh, establishments uh, are government-run entities. Uh, Pop Joy Mint is a privately owned, um, I guess you could call, call them a, a kind of like a, a third-party provider uh, of minting capabilities. Um, and they did it all, you know, uh, I don't know if you guys remember the Franklin Mint back in the day, they were really popular during the nineties, right? Yeah. You flipped on the channel, you turned on the TV to the home shopping network and bam, you had Franklin Mint stuff, um, being offered for days, you know, multi-coin sets. If you get into the subscription program, you know, we'll send you one of each president or whatever it is. It's a sterling silver big huge honking metal and then they give you a really cool mahogany display case and it was pure 1990s uh americana <laughs> back in that day um and the the pop joy mint was kind of an interesting case okay they started some sometime in the 60s um 64 or 65 or somewhere around there was was the the day that they had opened um, and, uh, throughout most of the seventies and eighties, this was the company that would produce all sorts of weird, funky, uh, type of, uh, uh, metals and tokens and, you know, things like that. A lot of stuff that today we would find in like junk bins, right? You, you know, that, that brass token from, uh, from somewhere maybe in, uh, in England or, you know, somewhere in, uh, uh, S South Africa or uh, somewhere. I, I don't know. Um, you know, that, that was, uh, that was a lot of what they did produce, right? Uh, it's a lot of the esoteric, very weird kind of strange type of tokens, uh, that maybe today a lot of us don't have a lot of kind of like significant intrinsic desire to own. Um, uh, mm -hmm. but as we got on later on in Pop Joy's production, they they really cranked out some pretty neat stuff, um, and a lot of it uh, a lot of it was produced for for countries that maybe had some sort of legislative bill. I don't know if that's what they call it because uh, I'm sure everything goes through the parliament. I, I don't know. Um, I, re I really don't know because there's a number of these countries that are under British control and all that. And they, they wanted to designate some sort of kind of legal tender, uh, but more so on the commemorative side of things. Um, so so they ended up pivoting from doing all, the, all of this other weird kind of uh, subpar work. Um, into diving into what we know as uh, 
worldwide commemorative coins with ridiculously stupid low mintages, right? Does this any of this sound familiar to you? Uh, Royal Canadian Men is one of those offenders, repeat offenders over and over again, um, that that make these funny one shot commemorative type things. Um, and uh, you know, it, it's uh, it, it was different. It was different, and a lot of people lead into these ridiculously low mintages. It didn't matter if it was Pop Joy, if it was the Royal Canadian Mint, if it was the New Zealand Mint. Uh, all we knew in the early 2000s, late 90s, is that this was going to be a thing. People were paying 5 to 10x the what they considered to be the market value for the things. Um, and it was just crazy. And uh, this was one of those companies right here. <clears throat> that lead into that. Now, there were privately owned companies, so they were probably more than likely contracted through like the New Zealand Mint, the uh, Australian Mint, Royal Canadian Mint, Royal, the Royal Mint for all of the British production and, you know, Scottish coins and all that stuff. Um, so, I, I mean, if you had to guess, you know, the, the smaller privately owned companies were going to be the first ones to go if, you know, the good old proverbial poop hit the fan. All right. Um, and it did. All right. Uh, there was a certain thing called the pandemic um, that ultimately um, kind of did this whole slow death spiral uh, to some of these companies. Pop Joy Mint releasing in various press statements that this was indeed the case. Um, they ended up. Um, trying to endure um, the uh, the Royal C Canadian Mint, or the Royal Canadian Mint, but the, uh, um, I don't even know what I'm talking about. They're trying to endure the pandemic, all right? Still being able to produce uh, product for the people um, and still making their healthy profit margins, okay? And then um, it was, I guess, within the last few years, allegedly, um, you know, and this is coming from them, uh, that they had lost one of their big accounts, whatever that is. Could it be the Australian men could have been, you know, one of those big mint, uh, facilities, um, because certainly these larger government ran mints, they can't produce these because they're working on the regular kind of circulating coinage and then various other, um, Kind of like uh, the major releases, right? Uh, the Britan Britannias, the uh, uh, Australian kangaroo coins, and various other different types of like uh, staples. So they are contracted with a company like this to do uh, some of that work. So they, they probably lost one of those big uh, government-ran kind of mint um, uh, clients uh, through this. And uh, that's that. Now, you would go to their website, popjoy.com slash US, um, which they do have a uh, an office in Minnesota. All right. So they also have a little bit of a, um, a presence here stateside. Um, and that's the big reason why that we got to see them at places like the Pittsburgh a and and a few other big coin shows all throughout the country. Um, so here's, you know, I mean, they don't have any official declaration on their website that they are closing. Uh, we don't know when that is. All I know is, is that it's kind of business as usual. They have 2023 uh, Christmas coins with these emperor penguins on there. Really cute stuff. Um, Christmas 50p, I would assume that's 50 pence uh, as far as the denomination goes. Uh, but this is a Falkland Islands, okay? This is kind of like the weird stuff that they were producing. Now, when we click into, say, this this thing right here, you're going to see that there's a few different options, right? There, There's different types of coins with designs, you know, all very attractive stuff, very nice stuff. Um, you know, and they operate similarly to the Royal Canadian Mint. You know, I'll tell you if it's like almost out of stock, if it's a hot item, you click into the product, you know, it gives you the rundown of, of what you're, you know, bit, what you're buying here. Um, you know, the checkout process is super easy. And again, folks, I've owned a fair share of Pop Joy Mint stuff. Believe it or not, right now, currently, I don't have anything else. 
and th this is kind of crazy because I usually have one or two items um, in there. So this one doesn't have like a, 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 a specific distinguished uh, mintage on here. Uh, it says issue limit 175, which is crazy considering the actual issue price is only 60 bucks if they only made 175. Um, well, it says issue limit. Um, now, I don't know if that specifically means that they're only releasing or making 175 pieces or if this is the most amount of pieces that any one person can buy, a household limit, right? Um, issue limit is kind of vague. Uh, it, it has like two different meanings. Um, but, you know, uh, I'm just going to assume that that's kind of like the issue limit for customers is that you can only order up to a certain amount. And uh, the, I'm sure that a lot of this product is made to order. Um, so if you did put an order in for, say, 175 of them, they're going to mint them. All right. As long as there's no defined mintage limit on these. OK, which I don't see here. Um, but yeah, this is like an example of one of those things that the Pop Joy Mint released. And they, they assigned a certain country to it. St. Helena, um, Nui, um, Falkland Islands, Marshall Islands is another big one as well. Um, Marshall Islands, I don't think they do so much anymore, but... Uh, this is not Pop Joy Mint, but they, you know, they probably made like big bullion pieces like this, five ounces. Um, that one, I believe, came from, from the Germania Mint, which is interesting. They're gonna, probably going to end up picking up some of the business lost from Pop Joy's closing. Um, but, I mean, check things out. I mean, they got some pretty neat stuff. Now, admittedly, I am going to say this. I would say the actual artistic design and quality compared to some of the other commemorative type releases, they're not quite up to snuff as, as some of those other ones. The engraving work, I've seen much more crazier stuff um, that, that's been released from other worldwide mints. Um, we're seeing a heavy emphasis on their website of Christmas stuff. That might actually be the last hurrah here of some of this. Um, new releases. Let's see what, uh, what they have in new releases here. Um, they have uh, a five coin Falkland Islands uh, proof like base metal set. Um, and they call that non circulating legal tether, which, if you were in the Falkland Islands, you could rip apart this proof set and spend the coins because they all have some sort of face value to them which is crazy that's crazy that anyone would ever do that number one and number two that you would rip open that set but as you can see it looks like they're kind of winding down on the various products i don't see anything like super expensive um unless you're buying say like one of the um egyptian god coins here in quantity 10 pieces for 311 dollars that's us U.S. Uh, coins, but I, sorry, I have an airplane flying around here too, so you guys are going to hear that. But uh, that is Pop Joy Mint's website. Now let's talk and pivot a little bit about whether or not uh, you should go crazy, go on eBay, and buy some of these things. Okay, and uh, right off the bat, you're going to see that there is. I, I typed in Pop Joy Mint. There's a thousand plus results, which means there's a lot of stuff out there, ladies and gentlemen. And some of this stuff, it doesn't necessarily say Pop Joy Mint in the listing titles, all right? But it is specified within the listing, okay? So if you come across, say, a listing, like, for example, um, I saw a few of them here. Um, 2017 Britannia Rolls Away is PF70. Reverse proof one ounce silver rare with motto. This one, I believe, is a Pop Joy issue. Um, it's not a real Britannia, but if we went and looked at the, um, if we went and look at the item specifics, you'll see brand mint says Pop Joy mint. All right. Um, so the question is, should you go out there and you start buying some of this stuff? Well, I'm going to tell you this right now. All right, and this this might actually make your decision a lot easier. Some of these coins are actually kind of cool. Um, I, I actually like the Britannia rolls the ways. That's the first time I've seen that before with that reverse proof. I think it's very attractive. This uh, 
uh, to to ta to tank humans, hu humans. Wow, nailed it. Uh, Death mask pyramid, which is one ounce of silver. That kind of looks neat too. Um, some of it's pretty clean. They, they actually uh, did a Adolf Weidman's uh, last Walking Liberty one ouncer. Not digging that at all. It's not a good look on there. Uh, these are neat. The Sierra Leone, uh, which is another country that they assigned legal tender to. Uh, mintage of 500. Gold gilt, one ounce silver. That looks pretty neat with its colorized. I'm not a big colorized fan, but, you know. But as you can see, the designs on a lot of these were relatively basic. You know, they, they weren't going to impress you for the most part. Um, toward the tail end, and I could I could see this now. Uh, toward the tail end, before they they made their announcement here in the last day or two that they were closing up their mint, I'm looking at stuff that they had produced within the last few years and understand that they, it looks like they were beginning to kind of wind down based off of the complexity of some of these uh, designs that they they have for the last few years or lack thereof of compl uh, complexity. Uh, but as you can see, guys, everything is still very expensive. There was already a lot baked into these prices well before the announcement that Pop Joy was closing. All right, so there, the, the coins were all naturally expensive. Uh, this one's pretty cool, too. Um, Indian Ocean Territory, right? <laughs> I mean, oh man, who who would think that there would be any sort of like a side uh, type of coinage, uh, you know, for for the Indian Ocean Territories, which probably makes up uh, about maybe a thousand different island change, chains. Uh, Pop Joy Mint, yeah, uh, two ounce. Uh, this one's really cool. This iridescent antique high relief siren. You know, with box and no certificate of authenticity. Shoot, I might consider buying one of those. But that was probably 2018 to 2020 because when the when the pandemic hit, they they struggled mightily. Uh, they couldn't get people to come to work, you know, because of this pandemic. And a lot of their best stuff was prior to the pandemic. So they were limping along for the better part of the last, like, three years. Um producing some of these things so is this is this something you guys need to go out of your way to like buy up all these things i would say not right because there's still a fair amount of product number one number two the prices are already at a very very just high elevated amount of money um it's not going to do you any good to to buy out some of this product because there's still a whole lot of them available out there, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, some of the stuff within the last like three years, I probably probably avoid uh, only because it's not their best work. I mean, you know, this was like an example of one of the. I, I saw this Scotty dog or whatever kind of dog it says Royal on there. Um, this was like one of their earlier works where they began to make that transition into kind of like more meaningful coins. All right, uh, or uh, production pieces, um, and there you go. It, it's got a semi younger Queen Elizabeth the second on there, um, but shoot, this is seventy three dollars, guys, and, and that, that is not a spectacular looking uh, dog image on there. They, I mean, you know, side view with the, the dog staring at you. Uh, yeah, it's it's not good, <laughs> but that that was kind of like that was one. I and I remember this too. That was like one of the first kind of like attempts of 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 switching over to all of this weird crappy uh, tokens and metals stage of the seventies and eighties, and then pivoting into something that was at the time seemed like a much more meaningful direction for the Pop Joy Mint. Um, you know, to help kind of uh, a little healthy competition um, with, you know, uh, with other worldwide mints that were also changing direction as well. And we saw it at a much higher pace uh, from like 2002 to 2005, where we began to see like more, like three, four, five releases every single month 
um, all with mintages of like a hundred and fifty for this gold gilt blah 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 and all that stuff. Um, so my recommendation is no. You, you buy the pieces that you think you like and that would work with you if and only if this is your thing. If not, if not, then then that's it. We we are saying goodbye to another um, uh, numismatic institution in the Pop Joy Mint, um, you know, and uh, you know that's it. That that's another chapter close. Uh, a lot, you know, a lot of a lot of coin shops have closed over the years, especially during the pandemic. Um, you know, before silver and gold became like the hottest commodity. You know, there there were coin dealers that were worried that you know the the pandemic was going to do them in, and they ended up closing uh, prematurely before you know uh, the rise in numismatics and precious metals began to take shape. All right, so. Um, there you go. That, that's kind of like my uh, synopsis of Pop Joy Mint. I I barely knew ye, um, and uh, y you know it, it's I don't know. There's gonna be other. There, there's a lot of other mints and other private issuers and things like that. They'll always be around. The Pop Joy Mint gets to join the likes of you know Franklin Mint, Engelhard, and uh, a bunch of these uh, other old you know companies that that you know lasted for a while and uh i don't know what the future holds for the product and for all the coins and uh commemoratives you know we'll see there could be some collectability here not sure uh we don't see it with franklin mint because they they did a lot of privately issued stuff for uh for tv and uh none of it was designated to any one country so that's it, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, rest in peace to Pop Joy and um, to Miss Pop Joy. Enjoy a nice retirement. And uh, thank you for being around for us collectors. All right. See you guys.